Please be seated. The chamber is now back in session. Say the president. Next, it comes to the time when the accused and his defense counsel uh, have an opportunity to respond to the opening statements made by the co-prosecutors. Yesterday, the chamber received a letter from the defense counsel who requested that the uh, regarding the uh, oh, opening statement or response, and uh, next, I would like also to ask the defense counsel to give some clarification uh, or arguments concerning the letter sent to the trial chamber and what is uh, the underlying purpose behind the letter. The floor is yours. Mr. Ho. Thank you, Mr. President. The defense considers that the victims have been waiting for a long time for the accused to speak for himself. The defense wishes that the accused be afforded the opportunity to speak now. After that, the defense will decide whether the lawyers for the defense have something to add. First, however, we are seeking leave from the court so that the accused will be allowed to speak for himself. In response to the opening statements of the co-prosecutors, the chamber accepts the change in how the response it delivered. Concerning, uh, in response to the statement made by the co-prosecutors. Next, I would like uh, to invite uh, Mr. Kang Kek Il to stand up, please. I would like you to give your response to the one that made uh, by the co-prosecutors. You now take the floor. The accused. Thank you very much, Your Honor, the President. First of all, I would like to state the historical events in Cambodia as detailed by the co prosecutors already. I would like to emphasize that. Cambodian people have suffered uh, from this uh, execution for long, starting from 1966, when Lonel, General Lonel killed 
peasants. Later on, the coup d'état on the 18th of March took place, and all political parties competed uh, in the race to kill Cambodian people. Until the 17th of April, 1975, when these crimes have be uh, were uh, fallen exclusively to the democratic Cambodian regime. So these are the detail of the events that I would like uh, to present to the court. Next, I would like uh, to present my position as following. From the 17th of April, 1975, to the 6th of January, 1979, the Democratic Kampuchea Party was exclusively, exclusively in charge of the crimes in Cambodia. The ample evidence, or the main evidence, is the statute of the party of 1976. The first page of that statute states that after the leadership of the Democratic Kampuchea and with the achievement, a successful achievement on the 17th of March, uh, April 1975, the Communist uh, Party of Cambodia led uh, the socialist uh, regime exclusively uh, in all fields. So this is the evidence that I would like uh, to present to the nation through this trial chamber of the ECCC. One. I would like to give analysis on the crimes across the country from the 17th of April 1975 to 6th of January 1979. After the 17th of April 1975, Pol Pot was wild and he raised the line that later affected the lives of people. Mainly, Pol Pot has thousands of candidates in his hands. The crimes in that period was huge. In addition, the loss of life of the people is calculated as uh, equal to one million people and as a member of the CPK I recognize that I am responsible mentally for the crimes uh, committed by the CPK in those periods of time. I would like to express my regretfulness and uh, my heartfelt sorrow and uh, loss uh, for all the crimes committed by the CPK from 1975 to 1979. Number two, I would like to express separately about the crimes at S21. I would like to acknowledge my responsibility through legal means, or legally. I mean, I would like to emphasize that I am responsible for the crimes committed at S21, especially the tortures and execution of the people there. As what I have already said, when the co-investigating judges took me to the site with uh, 
the reenactment uh, process at Chung Ak and at uh, the Tua Slang Museum, may I be permitted to apologize to the survivors of the regime and also the families of the victims whose, whose loved one died uh, in, uh, brutally in the regime in, uh, at S21. Now, I would like those people to please know that I would like to apologize and I would like you to consider my intention that I have not asked you to give me that, uh, forgive me now, but I am attempting to do so later. I know for sure that the, my crimes uh, committed on the people, including children and women in particular, are uh, the crimes, the serious crimes that cannot be tolerated. So my current plea is that I would like you to please leave an open window for me to seek forgiveness. Third, the regretfulness of mine remind when I recall the past, I am very shocked. Whenever I recall the activities in the past, especially those under my supervision and that I order for the implementation of such activities which affected many innocent uh, people, including women and children. Although I did that because I received the order from Onka, but I w am solely responsible for those crimes. I already informed uh, the co-investigating judges that I am just a scapegoat and a person who were put to play the role uh, the uh, to play a role of killing in that regime people regarded me as a coward person and a person with unjust uh, act and I do accept all their arguments. In those regimes, uh, those times, I regarded the lives of my family uh, more important than those who were detained at S21. To challenge the order from the top, although I know that the order was criminal, I never dared to even think about it. So it was the life and death situation of me, myself, and my family as a whole. As the person who was in charge of S21, I never attempt to find other alternatives other than uh, obeying the orders, although I know that obeying the order meant that lives of numerous people would be perished. And now I am very regretful and I'm very shameful. And uh, I myself, I know that uh, I committed that crimes and uh, I have been shameful and uh, in the eyes of people who are victims and those who lost their loved ones during the regime and including my families who lost uh, members of uh, the family also. The solution, my current solution, I have decided already to cooperate uh, with the ECCC because the offenses, the crimes that I have committed on the Cambodian people, this is only the remedy that can help me to relieve all the sorrow and uh, the crimes 
uh, that I have committed and also the crimes committed by the CPK as a whole. I would like to confirm that uh, the crimes, notorious crimes at S21 uh, created at S21, I am now giving myself uh, to the ECCC honestly, respectfully, and then I am in the hand of the court now. Finally, I would like to state that I am still continuing to cooperate with the ECCC in hearings, and I will tr answer all questions you may uh, ask me in the court and will answer all the questions m that the co-prosecutors may ask me and also the questions uh, posed by the civil parties and based on the evidence. The President, Your Honours, next I would like you to allow me to express my regretfulness uh, in, my, in, in my life uh, to all of you. I, I, have, I had never been satisfied uh, with my work. I tried uh, in, in the May 1975 to uh, challenge that, but uh, it was not successful. They asked me to establish S21, but I was that time as the, the deputy head uh, of uh, the S21. I asked, uh, uh, so I asked somebody to make sure that uh, my position was changed, but then uh, it was not uh, successful. But on the 31st of January, 1972, it was a shocking event when Sun Sen ordered the arrest of cadres from the former zones and arrest en masse, and I was very shocked. I asked him, I tried to ask him on the phone uh, about this, uh, and uh, he said that Dutch, uh, these people were arrested based on the confessions of Atun or Koi Tun, and you could never challenge this. And uh, as the person who once helped liberate the country, uh, I could feel how people who devoted to the party then were arrested and sent to S21. That's why I was so shocked. So through the ECCC, I had a very deep sentiment uh, with the uh, cadres from uh, the North Zone because I once was detained along with these uh, cadres and my suffering, uh, uh, my concern was with me until there were more arrests and let my life uh, was coming to a close end uh, because uh, I know that I was uh, very shocked uh, when people were arrested. Other people were arrested, I was shocked. Now I knew that my life was uh, close uh, enough to be uh, 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 executed because I knew that uh, when people were asked to send to Chiang Ai, I knew I could not work longer uh, because I was so uh, heartbroken because I stayed at home and people uh, never saw me uh, for at, at a later date because I could not concentrate on my work. And then later on, on the... Uh, 7th of January, then we, I saw the tank uh, cr came, coming cr across uh, my house and I could not do anything else. Then at night, I uh, just went out of the house. So the whole year during my escape, I lost everyone who once worked with me. Two of my brothers died. Six nephews also died. Uh, the wife of comrade Pon and Pon himself, wife of Mom Nai died and other comrades died. Finally, only me survived. So four people and my wife and uh, two children. And I asked if I could leave Brother Sarun, uh, the Deputy Secretary of New Zone. Uh, he asked 
me uh, to bring me back and uh, he asked me to join the party and I said that uh, one million people already died now only four of us survived it was not a different anyway so because uh, my life was not uh, uh, much of any value at that time That's what I thought, because uh, I did not give the high value to my life while other people died. So the whole year, I could not concentrate on the work. And finally, I uh, got a solution, which uh, is to uh, pray and to apologize to the victims. And I myself uh, wished uh, to pay a good tribute to my parents uh, and I I try to find the remedy to make me feel relief. Uh, at the beginning I only prayed uh, uh, to ask forgiveness from my parents but later on I attempted to pray for the forgiveness for the whole nation or for all the people who died and every year on the 17th of uh, November, I could not do anything but to pray to commemorate uh, my forgiveness and uh, the commitment uh, I uh, performed uh, during the regime. And I have drawn a, port, uh, a picture if the trial chamber allow me and I can even uh, show this uh, picture to you. The President, uh, you are allowed to present that picture. The inter uh, could you please uh, make sure that uh, the paper can be projected? Could you please stand up, the accused, says the President. Please continue. The last day of the Democratic Campuchia, the, the, the day that the Democratic Campuchia ended, So November the 30th of 1978 was, sorry, September, the 30th of September 1978 was the last day of Democratic Campuchia. And if you look at the sign here, we have three people, three seats. The middle one represent, uh, representing the chair for Pol Pot and the second one on the right for Nunchi and the left for Tamok. Uh, during the previous days, uh, when there was any anniversary of the DP, uh, CPK, only Nunchi was alone, but later on there were three people. So here, uh, the uh, what Pol Pot said was that the good or the proper line is the successful line. 
and uh, I wrote that what Tamok um, impressed. He said that nothing is on top of me. On top of the Tamok is the head. On top of the head is the sky. And with Pol Pot, I wrote that uh, the dynasty of Pol Pot stands firmly on the forces of Tamok. For Nguyen uh, he becomes a knight, uh, regardless of anyone becomes a king, so he still maintain that position. And I also uh, refer to the forecast uh, by a senior leader. I don't remember whether it was in Banti Ampel or Kokmon district, but I remember that uh, you may ask me some question for clarification. We have uh, Major Nia Wong, who uh, could confirm this. So this is the picture that uh, I drew, and uh, this refers to the Democratic Cambodia Party. So uh, this is the method of uh, authoritarian classless regime. And uh, that's all from me. Thank you. President, the trial chamber decides to take the painting uh, drawn by Deutsch and so that it can be included in the case file. Next, I would like the defense counsel to give to make uh, the response to the opening statements by the co-prosecutors. You now take the floor. Mr. Kasabot, your honors, the president, and the whole court, I am the national lawyer for the accused, Kang Kek Il, alias Doit, who has been charged of crimes against humanity and the grave breaches of the Geneva Convention of the 12th of August 1949 and the breaches of the 1956 uh, Penal Code, Your Honours. After having paid great attention to the opening statement of charges of the co-prosecutors, the defense counsel would like to submit some brief responses to the court and to the whole nation so that uh, justice is uh, balanced. One, what is the purpose of prosecuting the leaders of the Khmer Rouge regime? In prosecuting the leaders of the Khmer Rouge, the royal government of Cambodia has three main purposes. First, to find justice 
for the people who died in the democratic Kampuchea regime and those who survived the regime. Number two, to prevent this notorious regime be introduced again in Cambodia territory the second time. Number three, it is to preserve the sovereign of Khmer Nation. So, in order to make sure that the dead people, the souls of those people can accept, including the people who survived the regime, it means we have to make sure that uh, the justice is done legally because the law says that only two groups of people are to be prosecuted. First, the people who are senior leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea. So who are the senior leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea? The senior leaders of the DK, how many people were there? And we have to make sure they are all prosecuted. No one should be left uh, unprosecuted. Otherwise, the people who died and those who survived may not uh, be able to accept that justice is done. So again, if any one of the senior leaders is not uh, prosecuted, I think it is better off not uh, prosecuting any one of them. It is not justice. And the people who died and people who have survived the regime cannot accept it either. So I can, say, I can submit that uh, all the senior leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea, their names must be well identified and they all have to be prosecuted and be on trial. So this is the sole responsibility of the co-prosecutors. And we, the Defense Council, would like to submit that the co-prosecutors should main, uh, uh, perform these duties very well. Because now the international community may have not known how many people uh, in this uh, leadership role are. So for the senior leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea who died before being trialed, I would like the court also to issue a judgment to end or to terminate uh, that uh, action. And the second classification of the people include the people who are most senior people for the crimes uh, committed during the regime which violated uh, the national and international laws. So the people who are most responsible for the grave breaches of the national and international laws must be brought to trial. So those most responsible people have to be prosecuted, none is spared. Only after doing so that the dead people and all the victims who survived the regime can accept such trial. Otherwise, if any one of them remains unpunished, then it is not justice never be done. So as I told you, it's better not to trial anyone other than try, trying some but leaving the other at large and uh, people who died and uh, the victims may not accept it. In general, if the people other than the two classifications, as I mentioned, uh, are prosecuted, then I'm afraid uh, uh, the dead people or the victims of the regime uh, who survived the regime will never be certif uh, will never certify. Also, without identifying the names of people who are most responsible for the crimes and grave breaches of the international and national laws, I think it is really uh, 
uncertain because it gives some kind of suspicion to the people who were Khmer Rouge soldiers or Khmer Rouge people that uh, this generates some kind of atmosphere of fear that other people would feel they would be arrested and prosecuted. So the people who were most responsible for the crimes must have their name listed. No one should be spared. And then they have to be all prosecuted. So this is, again, the sole responsibility of the prosecutors, but they have failed to fully perform this duty. As I told you already, to the national and international community. So uh, we have to make sure that these most senior people and most responsible people are prosecuted and who they are. And for those who were responsible for the crimes and grave breaches and who died uh, before being charged, I would like the court to issue a judgment to terminate uh, the criminal action. Number three, I would like to present uh, concerning the people